that's a hip hop artist, let's go to the top of the food chain. Kendrick Lamar, best rapper on the planet, doesn't drink or smoke. He clearly states that he did not want to put himself in a, a state of consciousness where he couldn't relate to the people that buys his albums, where he couldn't really be effective and relate. Welcome to the Recover Yourself podcast. I'm your host, Martin John, the recovery mentor. In this episode, I'm talking with the host of the Sober is Dope podcast, the man behind Monk Healing, Pop Buchanan, about the myth behind creativity and intoxication. Pop is a hip-hop artist, and we're talking about the careers of some of the leading artists in the hip-hop community. We address how sobriety or being in control of yourself, your message, and your creative output puts the sober artist well in front of those who have to ask their drug of choice for permission to be creative. We also talk about what I consider both above and below the line creativity. When we're creating above the line, we feed ourselves the spark of energy and creative source that we're looking for. Alternatively, creating below the line is related to gaining those exact things from external sources, in this case, namely drugs and or alcohol. We cannot deny the deeply held cultural beliefs that creativity and intoxication are linked. This perception can seem all too true when we look at some of the connecting factors between the two. For one, both tend to be novelty seekers, looking for new and interesting ways to spend their time and exploring the world outside of the traditional. Both also are perceived to live tortured lives, meaning they probably have a great insensitivity towards punishment. Both artists and addicts will stand by their decisions, even if it results in scrutiny by large portions of the population. Finally, I will mention disinhibition as another correlating factor that both of these individuals share. One point I want to make very clear before we get into this is that I'm a strong proponent of the idea that we're always stepping into higher consciousness, and my next episode is going to be all about that. But I mention this because I'm presenting this conversation today. 150 years ago, maybe even 50 years ago, this conversation was not only not had, but it might not have even been possible to have. As we step into the next levels of our own consciousness, things are changing, and today we can access things that we weren't able to access 50 years ago. Things are changing very fast, and sobriety seems to be the way forward. So, Pop, welcome. Thank you so much for talking to me about creativity and addiction. Well, you man. are welcome. Yes, yes. Oh, man, this is a big topic. It's been something that has frustrated me for the 19 years of my sobriety. Um, because I'm coming from the arts, as are you, right? Like, yeah, yes. And and the reality of the message behind creativity and drugs, alcohol, um, sex, is it's it's all there. I mean, but I want to, I want, I want this to be the conversation that gets people to be like, oh, like that is wrong. And not that it was always wrong. Maybe maybe there was a point, you know, 150 years ago where in order to get beyond your own self, we needed that. But but consciousness has grown. We've grown. We understand that sobriety is 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 giving us so much more than any any substance can. And so can you just give us a primer on creativity and sobriety like as you see it yes and i actually wrote something if you don't mind i would like to read it um yeah. and it's very important to me this is what came to my heart initially and then i'll explain it mm -hmm. create creativity is about potential maximizing your potential having attention to detail and being authentic a hundred percent of the time my creativity during or intoxication fell flat it made little to no impact and did not align with my authentic self. Creativity in a sober mindset is timeless, rooted in my reason for existing, br bringing me closer to my calling and the greater why. Why am I here? There is less regrets in sober creativity, less self-editing or actual editing. So what why i wrote that is this is one of the saddest cases for me because when i were when i was younger i started smoking marijuana at four, 15 years old right and i swear everyone around me was like all my friends they were doing it and i was the most creative kid i was a martial artist i was a poet i would run i was active i was doing all these things it was night and day 
And I feel like the death of Poppy, that's what everyone called me when I was younger. I was this jubilant, innocent kid in church all the time, 100% different. And I started smoking marijuana and I changed. It was like this darkness consumed me. And from that point, creativity started to be linked towards my art form and all of the activities I was doing. So it created arrested development through high school. I was always kind of like the darker than most of the kids, all these kids. I went to a beautiful Catholic high school, Bishop Lachlan, all of the kids are really innocent and bright. And I used to come in with this little extra darkness because I was always getting high in the morning. Right. Mm -hmm. And then my family had me fast track to go to Ivy league schools. And I wound up going to a state university um, because I'm a pretty smart guy, but my potential was totally affected by my addiction, right? And then I think the weed was actually a gateway drug into the alcohol. And at that time, as being a young kid, I did not know that I had an allergy to alcohol. So once I started drinking the alcohol, it created this problematic lifestyle. And then everything was fueled towards creativity at that point. I was doing music, right? So I had to smoke weed to get to feel like I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a do really well in this session. Everyone to be smoking marijuana, right? Everyone to have bottles. Then when it was time to record, it was so difficult. I felt like they was like, let's do another take. Let's get your timing together. Let's work on this. Let's do this. And then when the songs came out, it was kind of like, okay, they're really good and they're really creative and they're really fun, but there was always something missing. So I amassed thousands of songs throughout this whole career and we never put anything out. There was never no momentum past the studio, although I was an artist, because something was always missing. And I think th because the creativity was fueled through the addiction, it fell flat and it was t totally a negative potential, right? So my job and i'm glad you're bringing this up as an artist and as a creative is to let people know this is absolutely a myth there's no basis to suggest that intoxication or addiction can help or fuel creativity we have an understanding that artists and addicts are 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 often one in the same yes right there is there is there 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 is a there is a belief from people that are not creative that the creative industry is run through addiction now i heard a story of a concert that uh, uh, uh eminem did where he told the entire audience that he had two years sober or whatever and then he pulled out a bottle of vodka and he was like how about i just you know drink and everybody in the audience cheered for him that's crazy and then he drank of course it wasn't vodka and then like he had some sort of a suit or whatever that 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 all the water just spilled out oh that's awesome right so he right. but but everybody in the audience was like yes drink when he just said i have 2 years sober like this is what people see when they see artists and like they see people who are weak to addiction, weak to alcohol, drugs. They utilize these things and that they are the source of so much creativity. So I want to ask you, like, what do you see in terms of like, I know we've talked about a number of people, like, who do you see and, and how can you claim that? I mean, just because there's no, like, using wasn't a source for you to be creative. How can you claim that there's no basis in it? All right. Well, one, let me correct that. Using was a source of my, me being creative. That's why I use so much in my career. But it's, it's now that I'm not using, I'm a much more creative but my basis for that is this, as a hip hop artist, let's go to the top of the food chain, Kendrick Lamar, best rapper on the planet, doesn't drink or smoke. He clearly states that he did not want to put himself in a, a state of consciousness where he couldn't relate to the people that buys his albums, where he couldn't really be effective and relate. There's no better rapper besides Eminem that could really, at the top of the food chain of creativity than Kendrick Lamar. They're good friends. Eminem's career totally went he has a, his he was able to preserve his career through his sobriety so you could look at Eminem when he was using and you could look at Eminem now he's much more 
I think much more authentic now is less anger and rage in his records. But that, well, look, he's sober, right? Um, my so let's look at Eminem for a second. Let's, let's like, like, let's examine his career briefly and let's talk about a little bit like what did his work look like while he was using it? You, you would hear a lot of like anger. He would express his anger towards like pop bands, boy bands. And it was like always kind of misplaced because you have this really tough kid and this really brilliant kid who, um, you know, we're like, why is he dumping on all of these like offbeat boy bands? Like what infuriates, what infuriates him in regards to them? And then he, you would hear a lot of anger with his mother and he would, you know, and I love Eminem. He's one of my favorite artists, and it's all due respect. Yeah. But as addicts, we know if you don't do the work, if you don't make amends, if you don't fix those relationships, it's gonna it's gonna play on the addiction, and you can hear that in his records, right? And I think misery loves company in a lot of ways. So a lot of people who could identify with him that was suffering, come from broken homes and stuff, that made him appealing. But you felt a lot of pain. Everything about Eminem was this is a broken person right here. He's in pain. He needs help and he's slightly off. There's something off about him. And that's what you got from the record. Intrinsically, you felt pain and sadness and all of this disconnect and all of his relationships with his baby mother, for God's sake, his wife, his friends, the, the industry. It was like, okay, he, he came across as a guy that was talented, that was locked in a room by himself and just was mad at the world. And... Fast forward to sober Eminem, you see a lot of balance. You know, he talks about, you know, he 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 attacks a lot of the things that he were a lot of the people he he talks about making amends. He addresses his relationship with D twelve and why that didn't work and why he was sad about that on his last album and how he had to spiritually let that go, right? You can see how he's using his art as a catharsis for healing now, right, is a different type of sound. Then he addresses his mother. He, he talks about, you know, he just, the time when he walked away from her the last time, he was like, I just wish things could be better. It actually makes me teary because I love Eminem. And when I listened to his records, it was so much sadness. So to see him in his sobriety start to fix a lot of these relationships was really cool. And just process them, you know? and it's a, yeah, and it's a, exactly, and it's he's a different person. He's much more serious now, um, and he's still at the top of the food chain in a time where his sound is starting to become more irrelevant because artists in our at our age group, the kids are running the industry now, right? I'm 40 and I'm still rapping, so I'm appealing to a subset of old school hip hop heads who really appreciate lyrics, right? Mm. And Eminem is still at the top of that food chain, but I don't think he would have survived if he was still using and dumping on everybody and putting out all of that pain. So you could see through his career how his creativity, um, he, he really benefited from his recovery and it's better. It's a more healing message than a message of pain, right? So that's my take on that. Yeah, and that's a huge, that's a, that's a big deal because um, you said he wouldn't survive and he, he might not have survived physically. Physically. And he, he might, almost did. And he may have been able to, like, as someone who's using, I mean, you can really, you can very quickly lose your lose your heart and just go where you know you're told to go and so for him to be able to take that step up well, that is having recovered to who you are and like being honest with who you are and not trying to be dragged through the mud or so to speak of just like the world around you yes yes and um i always have a saying when i first found my when i first got sober seven and a half years ago I, 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 the last thing on my mind was creating again, right? And if it wasn't for my friends and my family who really did a good job of saying, we want you to start making music again because you're passionate and you're really good and we really like you and as an artist. So I was encouraged. And then I said, well, you know, they say busy tames the beast when I was in, um, a, when I was in rehab, busy tames the beast, busy tames the beast. So what that, so I tied that to creativity, right? And being a real estate guy, I used to always 
quote Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, where they say always be creating, always be, I mean, always be closing, right? Close mm -hmm. that real estate deal. So I changed that to the ABCs of life and to be closer to God, the creator. God is the creator. So we should always be creating, right? Mm -hmm. So ability to create is a God trait. It's a trait as our human. The God within has this innate urge to want to create things, make things, right? And to be productive. So I use that to say, okay, well, that's how I tame the beast. I tame the beast of addiction and a need to use and that extreme boredom and that escape that we, we look for. And I use creativity to do that. So when I created in an intoxicated state, it fell flat. It was empty and it wasn't me. You know, I can tell you this. I know a lot of artists who make a record when they're really drunk, think it's awesome. The next day when they sober, listen to it and cringe a little bit. And say to so you know, I like it, but I didn't really mean, like, it wasn't authentically me. So that darkness or that thing that comes out of you when you're really intoxicated is so far removed from your authentic self. So you're displacing your identity into identity that the addiction creates. It's like this automatic bipolar reaction to your creativity and it's not you so someone that's close to you that loves you could say that stuff you were saying on that record ain't that's not you buddy where were right. you shooting all these people up where'd you get the helicopter we have a jo running joke in the rap community the guy we embellish a lot i got 200 cars the helicopters and stuff right and i always loved that i was one of those guys but now I don't have the liberty to embellish because I'm so grounded that if I'm going to talk about something, it's going to be all of the truth. I'm a, the good, bad, and ugly. You know, being a host of a podcast and getting up every day and telling someone my, my ugly, the ugly truth of what I was and that darkness, that, that takes, it, took, it takes my sobriety to be that creative in my expression of that reality. I'm not embellishing or I'm not hiding behind nothing. I'm not getting on the podcast and saying, yeah, I was this awesome guy getting drunk, but I just gave it up. Ah, no, you know? But the other thing I want to say is I got a phone call the other day, Martin, and you're gonna, and my friend told me, a close friend of mine, one of my biggest music fans, and he kept saying, you know, and it hurt me, it really hurt me. He kept saying, I sent him all my new music and he was like, yeah, but it's missing this thing. You, you used to have this edge, you know, we got You used to be a star. We got to get you back to that and stuff. And I reminded him, I said, well, you're referencing an artist that was in his twenties and I'm 40 now. And I, unfortunately, I'm not a court. I'm not a, you know, the jester. I'm not going to sit around and dance for you. And I'm, 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 I'm a different person. And can you make peace with that? That person that you remember is no longer here anymore. Mm -hmm. And he was like, yeah, but I just think you was kind of a better artist. And I'm like, yeah, I beg the differ though. Why don't we go pound? I'm going to send you my new project. Just listen to it. Be objective. So he came back and was like, yeah, it's some cool stuff. And it's some cool stuff. And I could see that he was hanging on to the old paradigm of what he thought I was. But I was courageous enough to say that wasn't the authentic me. And this is who I am now. And everyone else responds way more positively to my music than they did in the past. And when I listen to my music from the past, again, it, was, it wasn't authentically me. So I'm a better person and a better artist, and I could do more for the community. I look at this in terms of evolution, not only in a life, but generationally. And I, I look at this idea of how do we access our creativity? I believe today creativity is accessed so much easier from a sober state. Yes, I agree because you, from it's inspiration. You're able to tap into your inspiration from a, a better, a better point. It's not so much pain. You're not pulling from some weird extreme. You're present, and you the signal is clear. Um, and I, I, I always thought about this when people, you know, a long time ago when people used to go to these art things, they didn't have televisions, they didn't have the same stimulus. So people would have to, it was very difficult. They would go to these art exhibits and these places to get, to get their escape. They wanted to get lost in the art, try to find some ex uh, external reality. And I think 
that's where that notion comes from. But now fast forward to the present, we have more stimulus than we could even place. We have cell phones. We have, uh, I mean, come on. So we're not talking about the 1800s here, right? right? So my thing is that old, that old way of thinking, we have to put away a lot of the old ways of thinking and apply it to current times because there's this disconnecting problem with young kids now, especially in the music industry doing heavier drugs now. I mean, I worry about that because we call, you know, you see these kids and they're really warped and they're really subdued and they're really chill and, and far out. And I'm still like, look, guys, we don't need to do all of that to be creative. Right. And you said something that's so important to me is consistency. What is the point of having creativity if you don't have a consistent output of that creativity? Right. So when we talk about greatness as an artist, some of the most of the greats are all sober, you know, you know, LeBron James, look at how he trains. These guys are not getting t- drugged out and, and messed up. They're training all day. They're doing the hard work. They're putting in the most effort. Again, my favorite case study, Robert Downey Jr. Now, let's look at that for a minute. Let's unpack that. For most of the kids out there, we they know Robert Downey Jr. is Iron Man, right? We know Robert Downey Jr. is the bad boy. He was always getting arrested. He's a very brilliant artist, but the media persecuted him based on his addiction. Every time you turned around, Robert Downey's was, back at, you know. He was he was doing a lot of that. He didn't need a lot of help from the media. Yeah, but, well, yeah, yeah. But they, they definitely highlighted it, right? Yeah, they should do. So my thing is that career-defining role, Iron Man, what – there's a great possibility he would have missed that if he wasn't in his recovery, right? Oh, yeah. And and look at that opportunities, being present, being pre- prepared. We say opportunity meets preparation. You can't be prepared if you're in an intoxicated state. If you're an artist, you're seeking opportunity, but you can't be prepared so that it doesn't work. Right. So you never get luck, right? That's you never the, get that's the, yeah, that's yeah. the that's the equation for luck. Yeah, or the other way you get lucky and get picked up, right? While in an intoxicated state, while using and because you're a creative, but your career flatlines because you become problematic. Hollywood does this a lot. Someone gets in, they get you acclaimed. But behind the scenes, they're problematic. They're using all day. The agents can't get them out the bed. Eventually, their career flatlines. So the same industry that kind of promotes this um, this um, idea that, you know, to be cool, you have to use and all of this stuff is the same industry that's going to say, well, you're unemployable. You can't get a job and your career is going to, re- uh, you know, hit a dead end. So for the people out there who haven't made it yet, for the artists out there who want to really have a solid career, I'm telling you in plain English, I don't want to dance around this. For you to have real potential, you have to find it within yourself in your natural state. And you're going to be better off because that's where your truth is. That's where that's timeless. That's the art that you create that you feel comfortable playing for or showing to your grandkids. So there's a terrible myth that I'm glad we're we're tearing down the veil because everyone out there who's really successful, the CEOs that's running these Fortune 500 companies, these guys are getting up early in the morning. They're finding their inspiration. They're meditating and um, they're they're using other means to find their to to fine tune their creativity. They're not using drugs and alcohol to do that. Yeah, drugs and alcohol are definitely getting in the way these days, ain't it? Like we we're finding more and more that like successful people are 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 not. It's not the '80s anymore. We're not just snorting coke all day long. Yeah, you know? um, and it's not. It's a. Uh, it is definitely oh, about understanding where you're coming from. Like as we evolve, as we as mankind um, evolves we are getting more and more in touch with the supernatural. Yes. Right? We're getting more and more in touch with God. We're getting closer and closer all the time. And so your creativity as an individual is not with a drug, with a substance. It's within you. Yes. And as we, as we grow as a society, we see this message growing as like everywhere. The sober community is larger than I've ever seen it. Yes. And yes. I've been in this community for 19 years. Right. And and the the community of you know self-wellness 
is growing all the time. Now, we still have problems with social media. We still have problems with ego. We still have problems with a lot of the things that are going along with this. But as a creative, stepping into your own and realizing that creating in and of itself is contributing to the betterment of this world. Absolutely. Absolutely. And when we create under the influence, we're creating, and and we could talk about like things like, oh, peyote gets you closer, or we can get you, you know, uh, like psilocybin or natural drugs, marijuana and stuff. But those things aren't you. Absolutely. And Absolutely. You're in touch with God without it. Now you utilize it and that's fine. Like, I don't like, you know, if you, if you guys want to do a, what's it called? A ayahuasca or whatever. Like if people want to do that, I don't have a, you know, like, I don't want to, I don't want to tell people what to do, but your creativity, your, your message is going to be beyond that. It's bigger than that because you're bigger than ayahuasca. You're bigger than, than peyote. You're, you're more intense than those things. And that's, and that's creativity. Absolutely. And the good, the good, Hey, we, we come bearing good news, right? Martin and pop bears good news. So ladies and gentlemen, if you, so we talk about peyote, ayahuasca and all of this stuff, it all taps into a molecule called DMT, right? And DMT is found in your pineal gland in the center of your brain. And that can be activated naturally through meditation, through prayer and through concentration and relaxation through time. And you and through time, studies show that as you meditate, you create something called a longevity effect, and it helps with your whole well-being. You could decrease your anxiety, you could improve your mental health, and you could hit these higher levels of consciousness. You don't need most of these drugs get you there faster, but it's it's like it's a, over. It's over. It's not. Yeah, exactly. It's that, and then it creates. <laughs> it's like I'll a, get you there, and then I'll yeah. I'll bring you back. It's like yeah, it's, just, it's 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 a round trip ticket. You ain't you correct. ain't going anywhere to stay. Yeah, to stay, and then it's and then you're always trying to go into the seeking of that feeling again. And that was my problem when I was a kid. I I smoked some marijuana. Everything around me stopped. I swear, time stopped. Everything looked like I was in a painting. I was moving in slow motion, and that effect blew my mind. I never found that effect again. I went on to smoke for the next 10 years. And so that's the emptiest promise of a lifetime. Hey, you get this one great experience, then you chase it for the next 20 years and you never get it again. Yay. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so that's an empty promise. And that's what drugs and alcohol are, empty promises. And now what I think is people are starting to smarten up. The risk versus reward. I go get this bottle. My expectation is I'm going to have a good time. My, my night was a disaster. I lost my cell phone. I lost my car. I lost the little person that I love. So one of my friends may have lost their life. I, I woke up. I don't know where who I slept with last night. I lost my self-respect and my dignity. I'm sick. I put myself at danger. This happens weekend after weekend, day after day. Eventually, as a whole, when we hit critical mass, people is going to start to say, wait a minute, this drug and alcohol thing is kind of like a thing of the past. I, 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 it's an empty promise I don't like. And I think right. the consumers are smartening up. All right. These these corporations, are, they had the veil over us for way too long. And now people are starting to say, nah, you know what? I want to have my consciousness Saturday morning. I want to be able to wake up and remember what type of fun I had last night. So my thing is, we are on the right track. And I think as far as us putting creativity in this proper place, right? Um, we could do a lot in spreading the gospel of recovery in this relationship to creativity, especially the consciousness part. So thanks for bringing yeah. up the, the DMT and uh, that escape. That's so important for many people. And yeah. you could get that, you get that naturally. You, you get to, Hey, mm -hmm. meditate. You want to be creative, meditate, pray, you know, Pray to just pray or do a mantra, find a, a write a gratitude journal, you know, write out your fears, write out what you want to accomplish, you know, face your fears. So, Martin, I want to ask you a question because you could really you speak eloquently on this. As far <laughs> as what do you think about creativity and the need for escape, escapism through creativity? And, you know, how can we find escapism through our sobriety? Well, I don't think you do. 
Um, I, I, I think as, as, as a sober individual, I think when, I, if we, we can very easily utilize our, our creativity as another addiction and utilize and, and continue to feed our dopamine and continue to feed, especially like when we make something and go, Hey, look at it. Give me some praise. Da, da, da. Oh, nice. Nice. Now that's a difficult that's a difficult statement, but I don't believe that we. I think everybody needs escape, and we will do that. But I think within sobriety, you check your shit, yeah, and right. that's one thing that you don't do when you're always you when you're using. You're like, that's a great line. I'm gonna hold on to that line, and I'm gonna use it and use it and use it because I'm afraid I can't come up with something more. Yes. As a as a sober creative, like I sit down and trust. I don't doubt that what's going to come out of my hand is going to be right. I know it's going to be right because I'm in a space where I I love myself and I can create from that. So in terms of escaping with creativity what you're talking about, like writing a gratitude journal or writing anything, writing poetry, like that's, that's flowing through unless you're not checking yourself and you're actually using it to escape. Like you don't, I don't think you want to escape through creativity. I think you want to, you want to sit, you want to sit in, in the prison of your life if or whatever right like it's not it's like you're not escaping that like you want to you want to be there because that's what we have to offer right each of us individually are in a different place and we are the ones that need to offer that and and if we're checking out if we're escaping from that place we're not offering truth we're offering um we're, we're offering escape and then we're we're just we're perpetuating the problem of escaping thank you so much because you led us right into the most important aspect running and fear when we talk about escape and we talk about addiction and creativity most people are running and running and running and they're afraid and they don't want to face that fear and it's tough ladies and gentlemen being human is tough and i'm calling all of us to find courage right let's stand our ground stand your ground on who you are do the work it's not easy. We're accustomed to everything being fast in our society, fast food, fast money, fast television. But for real, real wealth takes time. People have to go to work. You have to put that work in. You can't run from everything. If you, you have to face the bully. If you let the bully keep, keep bullying you, eventually you're never going to find space until you get up and you face your bully, face your fear. So this concept of escape is flawed in in itself because you're just gonna keep running from a reality that you was born to face and deep down everyone loves to a champion you love it when you stand up for something and even if you win or lose you you feel better if you stood your ground you don't feel like a punk so let's stop being like, well, I'm not going to call everyone a bunch of punks, but I felt like I, <laughs> I was going to say you said punk. I was like, that's yeah. the word everyone used to call yeah. me. What's up? <laughs> right, right. So like, my thing we're, is. We're, we're, we're showing our age, son. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know, right? Uh, but um, so my thing is, yeah, so stay on your ground because um, we could be very creative without needing to escape through the intoxication part, the drugs and alcohol. It's so empty. Um, and you feel a lot, you feel more alive when you actually, um, and you're authentic and you're there. Less fear, less apprehension in recovery, in your sobriety, being your authentic self. I talk about this idea of above the line and below the line creativity. Yes. Whereas we can reach the other side of the veil in two ways. We can reach the other side of the veil through intoxication. I look at that as below the line. The reason that I say below the line is because we can't get there without this thing, right? And so this thing is going to send us back. We are not in control of the journey. We are just kind of like going underneath in this kind of like peaking under. And we can only see so much. But yeah. when we are in touch with ourselves, when we can, 
when we can really be who we are, we're going what I call above the line. And this is like maybe the line of consciousness or whatever. And, and, and that is self driven. That is the energy to go above the line is coming from you. Now, how in, in being a viewer, because most people that are going to listen to this aren't, are maybe creatives, but they aren't all going to be artists. So how can a creative, a sober creative that is a consumer of art, how do you, is there any identifying marks of a below the line creator or above the line creator? I think one of the ways is through the consistency of the artistic message um, and also the tone. I think if we're looking at it from this, uh, a sense of music, you, a great artist has a consistent body of work that follows a consistent theme. The sounds may be different. The messages may be somewhat different, but the feeling is the same. A really, according to the music industry, bad artist is someone who has this like discordant sound or tone or message that's not consistent so you lose people. It's not a good body of work. You may have had one great work, but you don't have a great body of work. And I think that the indicator there is where's your, the motivation, the authenticity of the artist, the messaging of the artist. No one wants to feel like they're dealing with like, we love Jay-Z because Jay-Z always was Jay-Z. Jay-Z never uh, reappeared as Nas one year, sounding like Nas, trying to rap like Nas, and acting like Nas, and then the next year, he's DMX. You know, Jay-Z, we go to Jay-Z because we know he has, he's one, sober-minded, right? He's this guy who's always says clear-headed, always has a head on his shoulder, this businessman, this titan. He always had a consistent message, whether it was good or bad. And I think people could tell the difference. Um, artists who really don't do well is artists who are, who find success in being something that they're not. And eventually the, the, the rug is pulled from under them and people start to see through it. Like, wait a minute, you're not real. And you and I, we know we come from the, we, we, we come from the street. We know street things. We know real things. We know that you don't get credit on the street for being a fake person. You get credit for being real. They say that person is real. When humans say you're real, they're talking about you are who you was yesterday and today. Most people mm. would say to me like, well, I've always been consistent in who I was as Pop Buchanan, but what wasn't consistent when I was using was the stuff that was just like, well, Pop doesn't scream at you. Pop doesn't yell. Pop doesn't fight. Pop doesn't steal. Mm. But when you under the influence, you do these crazy things and people could say that. So when the question started coming up is what's going on with pop? Because I had a long track record of being authentic and then my addiction started to raise some questions. So my thing is how the, the indicators that people look at is one, what propels your meta, uh, your, your, your motive, your creativity, you call it self-propelled fueled, having access to that motivation, right? Someone who could pull that inspiration up in a moment. An artist is, you know, expected to be able to perform in a second. So if an artist is great when they're in an intoxicated state, what happens when they have to go to a brunch in to perform? And they're caught off guard. Hey, why don't you do that number you did last night? And you go, oh, 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 give me a minute. Let me go powder my nose first. So let me go. Do you see where people can see that? It's, no, it's, not, it's not a consistency there. So my message is above the line, you're always ready to go. Mm. Above the line, you're always present. Above the line, you have your own source of motivation and fuel, energy, and access to your creativity. Below the line, you have to check in with your drug of choice and ask if that drug of choice permission can I create today? Boom. <laughs> that's right. You want to, you want permission to create? Because that's what that's what creating under the influence is. That's just gaining permission from your DOC so that you can be so you can be the fake you that you've been creating from. Boom. Oh, yep. And that, and that's and that is not. And that as a creative, as someone who has built my life around my creativity, that is not 
how I want to exist. And that's not what, that's not how I want to create. Absolutely not. Absolutely, Absolutely not. And um, I think we could drop the mic on that one. That was That's a good right. One. <laughs> That's right. That's oh, right. All right, man. man. So thank you so much for joining uh, me with all of this because this is uh, this is a big deal for me, and I know it's likewise. a big deal for you. And and creating and 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 I want to break the 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 lie of this yes. creativity and 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 uh, and intoxication because who we are today is bigger and we're and we're more creative and when we can be who we are we're going to be as the most creative than we've ever been absolutely and and for the for longer periods of time right like the 27 club we don't want anyone to be part of the 27 club you could you could be creative without yep. dying at yep. 27 Look at Jimi Hendrix. How many of us would like to hear a Jimi Hendrix album after 27? Amy Winehouse, one of my favorite people, broke my heart. Her life was that, that she lived in a, a trap prison and she wasn't able to really thrive. And we got one or two good albums out of her. It wasn't worth it. You know, I'd rather have a, a less, you know, a less exciting album if that meant that it would have took her a little bit more time to get there and we would have had a bigger body of work and she would still be with us so sometimes you have to really pay your way and just really be patient on getting there don't look for any external thing to get you where you want to go you'll get there in time so this is what i mean about like um amy winehouse is a perfect example of under the line creativity yes because okay. she made some music and it was all very much within a very specific box. Yeah. That box was creative. Yes. And if she was able to access that box without drugs and alcohol, like on a long-term basis where she really got into touch with herself, she would have blown that box out of the water. Exactly. Right? Exactly. All she did was give us some fucking songs that really – are kind of going to get lost to time. And, and that's thing unfortunate is, because she was such a beautiful artist and she's a beautiful person. And that really mm -hmm. bothered me when I was younger. I, 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 Cause I was a good what Amy Lord, we lost Amy about what, 10 years ago. It was a while ago. It really bothered me. Also before we go, Whitney Houston, she was, she was the perfect example of above the line greatness. Mm -hmm. She was sober and was the greatest artist of her time. If not one of the greatest singers of all time. And then through her addiction, it totally that's the perfect example yep. usually it's the other way around the other it's way around. the line greatness yep. that whitney houston was the best example of how beautiful you are just as the universe and god made you if you could just tap into that greatness so america loved her innocence her beauty her songs that that creative reach and then as she started to decline in her addiction it just was heartbreaking because we saw what addiction took from her See, That's addiction right. Addiction is a thief on every level. It steals the dopamine in your brain. It affects your neurotransmitters. It affects your mental health. It steals your self-respect. It even steals your intrinsic talents and your core beliefs and your integrity. So it's the ultimate lie, synonymous with the devil, if you want to go that far. And everyone who worshipped or was synonymous with getting their creativity from the darkness of drugs and alcohol and the devil, is part of the 27 club and we don't want to die at 27. No. It's a lie. No, because that's just, because you're just getting started. You're just, just getting, getting started. started. So with that, on that just note, ladies started. and gentlemen, trust yourself. <laughs> trust yourself. On that note, Absolutely. trust yourself. Trust Martin, yourself you, and keep doing it. Yes, you. thank you so much for having me on, Martin. It's always absolutely, a pleasure. Absolutely. I want to thank Pop for joining me in this conversation. And if you want to be in touch with him, there are links in the description of this episode. If you do not know about his podcast, Sober is Dope, you would be advised to check it out. Prolific and poignant, he is offering some great content. Today, as we addressed in this episode, there are a lot of great people creating from a sober space. So many, in fact, that it's reached a tipping point, and you are part of that tipping point. Choosing to live and present yourself to the world in a sober way is a vital choice we are all making. We get to see, promote, and experience real connection and then show the world, which is hungry for connection, what that looks like. 
Now I know I create from a space of connection and sobriety and it adds to my life and work, offering me the ability to be honest and intuitive with my clients and within any moment I live. Speaking for myself, it is my sobriety and my attempt to live as emotionally sober as I am able to at any moment that contributes the most to everything I do. Next week, we'll be talking about consciousness and how we're all continuing to evolve into consciousness all the time. I want to thank you for listening to the Recover Yourself podcast. Please reach out to me with questions, comments, and suggestions because I'm always open to improving as well as connecting. I have digital workshops coming up and I am always putting out new content from where I am and what I'm thinking about. I'm so honored to be able to present this work. If you enjoy it, please spread the word, rate, and leave reviews wherever you're listening. And until next time, keep recovering yourself.